Dan Duran is uh, here. We're all here. We're, we're just having a little pre-show meeting about tonight's Kelsey's broadcast, which is a first for us. Not that we haven't done shows at Kelsey's and or taken our show on the road for many, many years. But we're actually going to try and do the show tonight. And I thought it was interesting. Interesting. That you said you were excited about it. Please articulate. Yeah. Uh, no, because traditionally when we've done these road shows, we've involved um, musical guests in the show. And tonight we're not doing that. And it's always sort of tugged at me whether that's the right way to go, because we're usually like in a restaurant environment or, a, you know, a venue of some sort where the music maybe doesn't transfer the best from the venue onto the podcast, which most people listen to and. I just thought, does it actually interrupt what people came to see us talk? So tonight we're just, uh, we're not having that. So I'm excited to see how it feels. That's all. Well, when you think about when we first used to do our show, I'm talking back in the horseshoe days where we would have nothing but performances Mm -hmm. at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe the music wasn't, you know, it transferred somehow, but it was also, we were broadcasting live on radio stations in those days. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was also the spirit of the holidays, etc. But you know what's happened in the 13 years? And remember, part of tonight's celebration mm-hmm. is the 13th anniversary of our podcast. Podcasting has changed the way we broadcast content, not just you and I and Dan, but, but the way everyone does, to the point where podcasts have now gone on the road to record their podcasts. Now, Smartless mm-hmm. aside, which is a big production with you know huge guests but a lot of podcasts will do that they'll go to a venue the audience will come to see them record what they normally hear and tonight right. for the first time we're going to try and put on an actual show yes we're going to involve the audience we'll tell you more about that mm-hmm. but we're going to try we're going to have a couple of our regular guests ralph ben Murgy will be there bill brio will be there we're going to have a couple of little interactions with the different people and dan of course doing his news yeah just, i mean uh, yeah you hit on it there when you said our what we're going to do the show that people hear all the time and um you know long ago we decided that the show on a daily basis forget being in a venue or whatever we would pull back from musical performances again because often it doesn't it didn't do the the musician um justice either you know just given the the situation so um the show really hasn't involved that so we take the show on the road why would it all of a sudden involve that is what i'm trying to say dan what were you uh, gonna say is this the first time you've done two shows in one day that, you know what dan you read my mind I was going to ask you if your union will allow you to be on, <laughs> will allow yes. you to do two shows in one day. And yeah. are you going to be charging us uh, double your rate? <laughs> yeah. My union knows nothing about this. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> because they wouldn't allow it. Dan's on the down low. <laughs> but if, hey, listen, if, if there was ever a place for broadcasters to hide, it's this program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be great. Uh, we were just talking again before the program started to record the program about now girlfriend Lisa is going to be there. Yeah. Doll's going to be there. The WID will be there. The what? The WID, the woman I'm dating. All oh, right. Oh, is that? I didn't know here. I just started. I just made that up. I just made that up a few minutes ago. Oh, oh that's the new. It's the new one. Okay, great. The WID. Yeah. By the way, <laughs> part of tonight's show, we're going to do some humble and Fred trivia. Um, yes. And I was thinking one of the questions: Can you name all the <laughs> girls or the women yeah. that Howard has been yeah. involved with? <laughs> that is so the funny. Show started because I. I was, I was kidding. We're on. That's, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I thought that would be a great question, except I don't want to embarrass the WID. Well, this is what I mean. I'm thinking all oh, the latest one might feel a bit weird. Yeah. You know, 
we're all sitting there naming off this. <laughs> well, the show's only an hour. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we run out of time. That's not true. Well, let's, listen, since the show began the podcast years, mm-hmm. there's only been a couple. Mm-hmm. And this one is the third that I've... No, that's not true. She's the fourth because there was the Mexican girl. I keep forgetting about her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You probably forgot about a few others. <laughs> no, no. Well. Yeah, but we're, <laughs> listen, there's been many others, mm-hmm. you know, on a, on a, you know, occasional basis. But there's only been four that I've actually started talking about on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The yeah, others were just trials. Those were just, uh, oh. they were t- I was taking them out for a yeah. test drive. Ten, ten day free trial. Yeah. That's right. By the way, another thing we wanted to do that was shot down. What was that? Thought, I, well, I had asked people at Kelsey's could... You know, we use the women's washroom so Dan could offer a showing, and they thought that's probably not a good idea. In poor taste. In poor, yeah, but hey, listen. In poor test. You know what I mean? They'd be lined up all night and take the attention away off the show, and it just wouldn't be cool. Yeah, we we, we would uh, have a sign. You've got to be this tall to ride the Dan Duran. (laughs) Okay. Uh, uh, Oh. Somebody just said, because uh, we were talking, I've, I've been playing little bits of the show that, that just took place during the podcast, and yes. somebody, Brent, Brent, Brent Atkinson, just wrote saying, you should also pay homage to the Dan Duran weather jingle where you guys sang along to a piano tune, which we have, by the way. Love the show. Looking forward to seeing you guys at Kelsey's tonight. That's Brent uh, from Waterloo. Now, we have played the Dan Duran weather, weather, Dan Duran. Mm-hmm. Um, and we will be playing more of those type of things on this program tonight. I have that, Dan. Yeah, here, which would be tomorrow if you're. Dan Duran, yeah. weather, weather, Dan Duran. Dan Duran, weather, weather, Dan Duran. Yeah, we did a lot of that. I think last week when I found these jingles that the very talented Pete Cunio put together. Yeah. You know, another thing we should do tonight, Frederick. What is that? I don't think we should shy away because sometimes we're shy, you and I. Mm-hmm. Oh, very. I don't think we should shy away from spending some time talking about the 13 years of the podcast because this is kind of the 13th, as I've said already, uh, celebration. Mm-hmm. And, and, and when I say shy away, because sometimes when we're in front of people doing our show live, mm. we... We tend to play to them versus playing to the tens of thousands that will listen to it on Thursday when we right. when we put it out there. Mm-hmm. I think we should talk about some of the things that have happened in the uh, 13 years, aside from the stuff that will be trivia questions or trivia, not trivia questions. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because there's yes. been some crazy moments. Like, I keep thinking about, and, and again, this could be a question about having <laughs> fucking... We should save the uh, Frank Sinatra Jr. story for tonight. We should right. save the Oswald's widow story for tonight. Oh, okay. You know, these could also be trivia. I thought we had that tucked under trivia, but you just gave it away. No, so. no. I, I, that, I, all I know, that was just a suggestion the other day when you okay. and I were talking about trivia questions. But I don't think we should shy away from that, even though sometimes we're shy. Sure. Dan, Absolutely. do you have any recollection how long you've been on the podcast? I, I don't imagine you do. I, no, I don't. <laughs> it's been a few years. Do you, so. do you know that you've been on today? <laughs> yeah, you, I know that. Do you have you a rec- know, rec- I, recollection about that? That so, you, you were here today? Mm-hmm. When did you get axed as the weatherman in Peterborough? Uh, the... Uh, uh, hey. oh, it was a layoff. Hey. It was a... Uh, I don't know. Why is, why is his internet I don't remember. It was, it was like... <laughs> I don't know. Um, That's funny, you know. Because like 2000. Okay, Dan, everybody's internet seems to be. Is it my internet? Because my internet is five out of five. Now he's frozen. Oh, you Lord, just froze. To, uh, Mojo. Uh, 2000 expired. Okay, start again. Start again because you froze and you're freezing now. So he froze and then you froze. So is it me? Really? Yeah. Oh. How am I now? You're fine. So what you're saying when Howard went to what? 
oh, no, no, no. I was just saying that Dan can't remember those dates. And I said, 2001, you and I went to Mojo. 2003, we went to the mix. 2008, or I got fired in 2005. 2008, I went to uh, Peterborough, got fired in 2011. We started the podcast 2011. You know what I mean? I can yeah. remember all those dates just like Zumba. Zumba. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, well, I remember so, things happened. I just don't, ass- yeah, but, I don't Zumba those dates. Yeah, like, but no, uh, but listen, I can Zumba the dates. And yeah. Zumba. I, I, Zumba. <laughs> okay. Well, but, I know but, that I got to Peterborough in 2009. Yeah. And then I got my job at the radio station in 2010, I think. And that was five years. So 2015 and then two right. years. So 17, I was. So you would have been, you would have been starting to sniff around this 17, gig. 18? 17, 18. All right. right. Is that right? I don't know. But, okay. it, but, did, but right. the thing is, did your participation really upped in 2020 zumba because you could come on the show remotely i don't remember i i will say this i can't zumba the memory of dan duran hanging around the uh studio much do you know what i mean i never did i never did like not you were never around the 30th avenue studio but but even this one which we came to in 2016 yeah, no, he was living in Peterborough and working. How could he? So so maybe his participation didn't start until the 2020s when he could come on Zoom. Speaking of Zumba. Right. This must have been around there. Well, that has to be. That, to be. that has to yeah. be. We've just, you know, what we've just done. We've just deconstructed your participation okay, on this so it's program. It's like four years. Four yeah, years I, I can only imagine how riveting yeah. this is for the audience. Well, yeah. this is the kind. Well, see, this is the kind of thing you're going to miss if you're not at Kelsey's tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say this. Unlike other times when we've collected emails. I just I hope everyone assumes if you've sent an email to Humble and Fred at Humble and Fred Radio, uh, you're in. I've had to respond to a few people saying, "Can I get yeah. tickets?" Am I? You're all in. Everybody's in. And it starts at uh, we're going to open the doors. The doors are open. It's a restaurant, but uh, you know, around six, <laughs> we're not we're not letting anyone in. But we're going to mm-hmm. start recording around seven six forty five seven. We're going to shut it down around eight. There's going to be lots of fun. We'll tell you about that. But let's. Go ahead. Let me make uh, one more announcement. Make an announcement. Making an announcement. Humble and Fred's. Okay. Interesting. All Canadian ale will be available on tap for purchase. Yeah. Okay. So you'll be able to enjoy that. Everyone loves that beer. They really do. Yeah. And uh, it It will also be available for purchase in cans at the venue as well. So, uh, that's rather exciting, and we'd appreciate it if you bought some, because it helps the club. Here's to the guy. Yeah, we'll have the beer there, and it's all been cleared. It's all on the up and up. And Dan, uh, I'm not sure if you heard Dan say it's a very good beer. And Dan, Dan is very particular when it comes to his funky, funky beers. Yeah, there's a few beers that I won't drink, and uh, this one I, I do like when I see oh, it. Oh, that's right. He will refuse a beer. Yeah, that's... Interjection. That's interjection. Interjection. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Dan is not... I know beer snobs that actually will not drink a beer. Some beers. Yeah. In fact, I, there's a guy up at the trailer, a couple over. He's a bit of a beer snob, and he won't. You know, if you offer him a Miller Light, he's, he'd rather not. Dan, you will take a beer if it's free. You will take a beer. You'll <laughs> yeah, take I, a yeah, beer. You'll exactly. take a Miller Light. Yes. You'll take a Crack Canoe. You'll take. You'd even take a Coors Light, which you hate. If it's free and there's nothing else around. Yeah, exactly. So you're not that level of beer snob that you won't take. Go right. If it's a really it's hot not. day, there's no other yeah. beers and e- being an offered a Coors Light. E- and I would. Yeah. But Interjection. E- mm-hmm. Interjection. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Dan. Let's mm-hmm. just establish Let, that. Yeah, exactly. It's not like you're right. like you. Yeah. You are particular and discerning. <laughs> until, Except when it comes uh, no, to paying for un, it. Until yeah, you're I not. I mean, you you do. <laughs> yes. you have, you're very principled <clears throat> until yeah. the, until they, until it inconveniences you. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what we're trying to say. Um, anyway, we're very we're very much looking forward to uh, this evening's program. But we should start this morning's program 
Because we're already 15 minutes into it. This episode of Humble and Fred is being broadcast to the world from our state-of-the-art Humble and Fred studio in Toronto. From our Brampton facility featuring a prestigious pool. And from a trailer in the Corthas with the Dennis Duranis bust. I'm Dan Duran, broadcasting live from the Richard Bullis Zoom Theater. And brought to you by the Retirement Sherpa, the Chambers Plan, Boron One, Bodog, our returning sponsor, Kelsey's Original Roadhouse, home of the Humble and Fred end of summer 13th anniversary podcast party tonight and our newest sponsor Ridley Funeral Home and now here are two men who want to package the non-confidence vote into a magic wand so they can win every argument so be careful they could non-confidence you and I non-confidence you and I non-confidence you it's humble and Fred Mike Boone just sent me a text on our group chat the Dandoran weather song was from Alex Pangman and recorded in April of 2020. So I think we, I think we've uh, Sherlock Sherlock Holmes that whole thing. So Dan Duran never really your participation started once you could do it remotely, right? And uh, so you probably once the pandemic hit. So we we stopped broadcasting in this in my house in the house studio in the Queensway studio. In yes. February of 2020. Mm-hmm. So then we started having you kind of hang out with us. And now it's blossomed into this massive uh, participation. From points yeah. around the world. Yeah. Do you guys ever, you know, just stop down and think about what the world would be like if there never had been a pandemic? I often think about that. I'd probably still be driving into the studio every day or would have got to the point where I said, I'm not doing this anymore. That's what I think of. Not so much. When I think about the dynamic of the show, I think by this time, if there had been no pandemic and, you know, some people say there wasn't, it was out for days by the government. um, I've said this to people that you probably would have, you know, gone away in the winter as you do and as I have been able to do and I would have either you know I would have just gotten guest Fred's or or we were talking about you doing it remotely anyway we had had those conversations about you just staying in your house and and this was before Zoom using Skype or something well I, I actually did it a couple of times but I never really felt comfortable doing it I felt like I shouldn't be doing it there's something just didn't feel right but when we were forced into it through the pandemic and you know, we got it just became comfortable, you know, on how um, handy or whatever the word is. Zoom was uh, just changed everything. But I even go beyond the show. Like, you know, would we have had that, you know, that housing explosion, you know, the interest rate problem, the inflation issue, all those things. Who knows? eh? Who knows? Well, it was an impressive hit in our, uh, you know, in our pop psyche and finan- both financially, you know, medically, obviously. And then, then yeah. just in general, how everybody dealt with things and then came back and the, the yeah. rebound is. And, and not to take this into a Trump space, but what I find fascinating about it when when I think about looking back at that time and how you know the biggest country the most sort of mm-hmm. biggest country in the world handled it the worst of almost yes. any of the, of the modern G7 G20 countries 3000 yes. people at its peak in America 3000 people a day were dying 911 every day and yet the weirdest thing in only four short years, none of that seems to stick to that administration. Because, you know, you talk a lot about how in the election cycle we're in now, how right they're able to hang, again, stupidly, inflation and prices on current governments. Because we all experienced it. It all bl- blew up because of the pandemic. Yet, they're able to hang that on the Biden-Harris administration and the Trudeau administration and other governments around the world yet for some reason the 3,000 deaths a day that Trump bungled doesn't seem to stick to him well nothing does it doesn't how he gets a free pass on so many things you know and 
you know, again, that whole theory that the first two years of any administration, you have to you have to deal with the last two years of the previous administration. So if you just do that timeline, Trump was a mess. He ruined what Obama gave him. And then Biden had to deal with what Trump gave him. And now there's some, you know, light at the end of the tunnel and Trump may fall right into that. But anyway, how many times do we have to say it? You just wish people would just do a little bit of research. But my God, it's. But even the regular, you know, they call the so-called mainstream media, even the regular mainstream media. If you think about what happened in the Mm -hmm. two or three weeks after the Biden Trump debate, Mm -hmm. even before that, for months, the mainstream media talking about the I don't know if this is a word, the degeneration or the. Mm-hmm. decline of Joe Biden's mental acuity. And then, of course, after the debate, it was all anyone talked about in the New York yes. Times and the Toronto mm-hmm. Star and all these mainstream papers. Forget what they were saying in the right wing. Everybody was talking about it. CNN was having roundtable discussions about the decline of his acuity. And yet, every day, the orange creature is becoming more cognitively... yeah. yeah fucked up I, I got like i ran out of the you know what i mean Dan? you know but <laughs> no, his right. cognitive decline is so apparent and yet nobody seems to be talking about it in any way that this in any way the same way and this back to your point about and nothing sticks to the guy he says mm-hmm. shit in every time he opens his mouth that if it was joe biden or kamala harris for some reason they would be attacking it but well, they that's method to the madness. You just say so much stuff like, I know it's just not fair. I mean, I've been thinking lately and again, not to get too deep into this, but, you know, the sexual abuse rap and all the horrible things he said about Kamala and some of the statements that have been made, not only by him, but that party about women in general. Yeah. If you call yourself a man, how could you vote for that guy? How could you? Look yourself at the mirror. I am a man. I'm going to vote for that guy after all those things you've heard. And again, fuck policy because it's all bullshit at the end of the day. It's all about character. Like, who are these people that just cling to him and give him the past? You know, sometimes I read the comments on Fox News and it's like people bring up the sexual abuse. It's like it never happened or it's bullshit. Everything. You've made this point so many times, Howard. You know, he didn't. He's not responsible for any of it. No. The 34 felonies, all the things. <laughs> he's not responsible for any of it. And if you read some of this stuff, there are people out there, part of the cult, that claim he isn't. It's all been sort of uh, <clears throat> placed upon him for political reasons. It's just bizarre. And, and the there is. There, and everything. There's, yeah. so, there's got to be some genius to it. And here's what I mean. We all watched that debate, which is now a couple of weeks ago. We all mm-hmm. watched it. And mm-hmm. he was horrible. But yes. from like just horrible by any measure, by any metrics, he was awful and she was great. But he left the debate stage and went right to that spin room and immediately started talking about how great he did and how polls had already showed he was this 91% and 70 And then all he's done since then is talk about the moderators were rigged, ABC should lose its license, everyone's against him, and it's the same playbook. And yet, so now, a couple weeks later, what should have been a disastrous, like, you know, I go back to Nixon. Nixon lost the opportunity for the presidency because his debate was universally in 1961 mm-hmm. against Kennedy. But this man has spent weeks now, and, and it's now considered the truth that he, in his world, won that debate. Well, because he's the, the best debater, is what he, it's he part tells of the strategy. people. You know, and again, and I've put, we've talked about, and you know, I'm still convinced the seed of all the Trump devotion is racism. You know, half the people that talk about policies, if they have, they wouldn't know a policy if it slapped them in the side of the fucking head. It's all about racism and hate, and they love that. He enabled that. And it's the same thing with that debate. A Trumper would sit there and go, oh, my, he just got his ass kicked. But then they hear him say, oh, I won that debate. So they feel confident now. Yeah, he won. He won. Yup. He said, he said he won. It's true. He won. They follow him like, well, it is. It's a cult. 
There's no like, like there's no other explanation. How do you fall into that? How how do you not? How do you not look at something logically and say, yeah, I really like Trump, but he lost the debate. <laughs> but mm. our society is is just not uh, set up for for and our media environment mm-hmm. and we're just not set up to deal with somebody like like Trump because it's all yes. been predicated on on the desire to be uh, accurate with facts. And then mm-hmm. over this t- time that, that that Trump's been there. He he just uh, it, lying is like a, a normal thing, and, and everybody sort of accepted that for some reason that it's okay for him to do it, and then have started adopting. Right. Well, lying is a thing, and now there's no confidence in the uh-huh. media because now we can't trust anything because everybody's lying. Hey guys, yeah, you know traditionally, you know all politicians, all stripes bend the truth. You know they bend reality. They just do. It's part of the deal. But usually just on policy or history or whatever. What's different about this guy? Again, you know, it's eating the dogs and claiming that they're terrorizing cities. Like blatant lies that actually hurt people directly. That's the sickening part, you know? And, you know, as I've said this a couple times, by a couple, I mean a couple thousand times. Like, Mm -hmm. we've all learned what gaslighting is. Like at yes. first it was like, oh, I've heard that term. And then over the last few years, we all get a real visceral sense of what gaslighting is because he does it all the time. I won the debate. So that's gaslighting it. But the, to the point where like I, I saw something this morning and he was talking about how she, Kamala Harris, is unable to articulate policy. But mm-hmm. that's him. He, he's so no, I know. he's so unable to actually articulate anything that would help that poor country. Mm. She can, but he gets away with it because he gaslights her. He gaslights everything. I mean, that's what you were saying, Dan, about ex- the, the acceptance of lying mm-hmm. on a national level is gaslighting. Because it used to be people would talk about policy. They would say, well, my plan calls for this. Her plan calls for that. I think my plan's better because it will benefit people in the following ways. Mm-hmm. But, but he has no plan. You know, that, that point in the debate where he talked about health care and saying, well, after all these years, he still hasn't repealed or done, redesigned Obamacare. He, and he said, well, we have a concept of a plan. Normally, that would be enough. Yeah. <clears throat> and and they're on her all the time, Kamala, about details with policy. Well, I saw him yesterday. He just stands up on the stage and he makes all these. We're going to cut your grocery bill in half. Well, <laughs> no, I know. OK, how can somebody <laughs> say, oh, excuse me, how are you going to do that? But that's accepted from him for some reason. Yeah, I know. Like as policy. Or he had a thing behind him yesterday that said corporate tax 15%. And then they come off the heels of it. That's impossible to put corporate tax at 15% at this point. The, The country simply could not afford it. But he says it and people think it and it comes out of his mouth. No, I know. It's great. And it's like, anyway. You know, after the debate, there was two guys on Fox, Britt Hume and Neil Cavuto, who said this man just got his ass kicked. Yes. But the rest of them went along with the with the with the grift, you know, like. No, I was just going to say, you know, there was Sean Hannity that night. Sean Hannity knows that that man just lost the debate, but it's good business for Sean Hannity to go along with it. Okay. Um. A podcast uh, countdown with Keith Oberman. Yeah, I heard it yesterday. Did you hear it yesterday? Fantastic. You know, I thought I thought I thought well, he, you. he addressed that. Sean Hannity, Bill O'Reilly, Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh, and how these guys, you know, failed at other things and then sort of fell into the right wing thing. Probably never really believed it, but you spout that stuff in certain regions of the United States, you become popular, and then all of a sudden, bingo, one day you may actually believe it, even though all the things you say are bullshit. Yeah. You know, and what I loved about what Keith Olbermann said, the damage, you know, you have to realize the damage that Rush Limbaugh did to the country that he supposedly loved. Like, you know, damage they'll never recover from. Yeah. He was so fucking evil. And he was. He was an asshole. Yeah, when I was listening, there's another there's another guy named Mark Levin. Oh yeah, and um, he was talking about 
the debate last week and he said he said i don't know what people are talking about here's what happened at the debate trump won because he was donald trump kamala harris lost because she was kamala harris no, I know. <laughs> that, that's the way he looked. Um, so it, it's like. Yeah, I was thinking about you. I, I, I drove to Brantford yesterday for this 36, 36 hole tournament yesterday. I was thinking about you in a couple. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about you for a couple of reasons. One, I was listening to the, the explanation of how those guys turned from sort of losers mm-hmm. to fucking, you know, mm-hmm. MAGA winners. And how a lot of their. As one of the best things Olbermann said was they're dis. They're sort of. Their failure in their businesses, they sort of took it out as, a, and that turned that into a failure as a country, which is very interesting. Yes. But I was saying, yeah. so I'm driving to Brantford listening to that. And at the end of the day, I thought, you know, because you're, you're a guy that gets bored with golf after 12 holes. So yeah. this is a 36 hole tournament. We got on the mm-hmm. golf course at 9 a.m. They right. brought lunch out to us. They had a lunch station set up, so we didn't st- we didn't stop, and we didn't get off the golf course till just after six o'clock. <laughs> I thought when I was going to tell you that you'd be like, you, you were on the golf course for nine hours. Oh yeah, nine. Was it the weather straight. shitty? Like no, spitting rain. The whole not time? at all. Not you know no? the first was here. fifteen minutes. It ran from the first fifteen minutes of the day. Mm. It rained a little bit to the point where we had umbrellas up. That mm-hmm. stopped literally after the first hole, and for the next 35, there wasn't mm-hmm. any rain at all. In fact, at some point, it got a little bit sunny. Yeah. But I just thought, when I told you I played golf for nine hours, you'd be like, oh, really? Jesus. Was, was there a I, point when you were getting tired of the whole thing? I asked you this before. There was the a year, point think, on the uh, mm-hmm. last nine holes where I was uh, definitely feeling not tired of playing, but just sore. You know, like it's a lot of swings in a day. Oh, yeah. Oh. Like, why? Can I just ask? Why? <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. Somebody sits down and says, oh, here's a good idea. We'll play 36 holes that day. Like, why? <sighs> you know, it's hard to explain. But the people that would be participating. Well, explain. explain. The people that would be participating at this level are used to playing 36 holes a day. Trust me. But why wouldn't they spread it out if it's a tournament? I mean, you're, because they, you because know, here's why. Great yeah. question. That's a great question. Because when a golf course gives up their their course, they don't want to do it. Very few courses want tournaments on them because and if they are, they'd like them, you know, to be one or two day events because you're giving up the golf course for the day. So yeah, nobody else could play. It. Say again. They're paid for it, aren't they? Yeah, but we there was, I think, maybe 100 golfers there yesterday. In a, in a normal day, I don't know, there would be several hundred. So, And it's a private course, so they missed out on their members being able to play that course. So if they're going to do a 36, they're going if to, and again, if you're going to do a 36-hole tournament, Dan, to your question, they wouldn't want it to be over two days. So why um, not just make it 18 like normal people? There's this, this is because it's a very competitive very competitive tournament. Um, anyway, listen, we're, we're, we're screwed now because we were going to do emails and right. we've run up against the clock, as they say in the business. So we'll do a couple now. Dan, uh, we got yep. news, of course. Uh, Larry Fedorik's going to... We couldn't get Larry to come to Kelsey, so he's going to do the show today. It's going to be great. And then after Larry, we'll do some more emails. Then we've got uh, Sherpa today. So it's a very busy program. And yeah. uh, Dan Duran, you'll come back uh, hopefully uh, if you don't mind, and you know do the do, the do news. some news that type of thing. Mm. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. In the meantime, Freddie, let's uh, get uh, some work done here, and then we'll set up a couple emails. Yeah, Chambers of Commerce Group Insurance Plan, Canada's number one group benefits plan for s- small business. Go to chamberplan.ca today. Get a free quote for your small business. Uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised at what it costs. I mean, of course, this is a nonprofit, so they're thinking, hey, we got to make this affordable for small business. And they've been very successful at that and done a great job at holding the line on premiums over the years, which, uh, you know, isn't necessarily easy, but they do it. Okay? And again, you can provide your employees with dental benefits, prescription benefits, and 
all sorts of therapies. There's a mental health component. There's, uh, you know, physical therapies as well available, depending, again, on the level that you buy. And you'll see as you investigate what's available and at what cost. They have the teledoc system. They have, like, a real-time mental health component. It's, uh, it's pretty clever. The whole thing, top to bottom. Chambers of Commerce Group Insurance Plan. And we talked a lot about the event at Kelsey's. Let me get some uh, details for you. Kelsey's is giving away an $11,000 VIP Paddock F1 experience sponsored by Heineken. All you got to do is come to a Kelsey's tonight or anytime. Enjoy a Heineken and scan a table talker for your chance to win. Wing night is every Thursday at Kelsey's. They have half price wings and $6 Coors Light. Kelsey's is the place to be. Bring your friends and family to the Burlington North location. That's where we're going to be. Happy hour every day, twice a day. Three to five and eight to close for $5 drinks and $10 appetizers. Plus awesome daily deals. Follow at Kelsey's Roadhouse on Instagram to keep up with all the action. Now, here's what we're going to be doing tonight with the Humble and Fred Trivia. We're going to have five $50 Kelsey's gift cards, one free wings for a year card, Frederick. Yeah, that's crazy. Plus you everyone. Can you, I can't even. I can't even. On your way out, they're going to be uh, giving you a $10 off $50 coupon for when you come back. So what that is, if you, if you want to come back, and, and of course you would, you can get a $50 coupon for only $40. And that's about it. Yeah, well, by the way, another thing, if you want to donate $5 to the Boys and, Girl Club, Boys and Girls Club of Canada, just $5 donation will get you three free kids' meals. Okay? However, that coupon, I think, to be clear, is if you spend $50, you get $10 off the bill. Yes, that's what I mean. If you, yeah. if you want you to buy a 50... You it would 50- cost you $40. You don't have to spend Okay. No, it no, it's. It, I just wanted to be clear. No, I think. Okay, well, I don't want to. Because it's on your way out. It's a. It's, yes. You can buy a fifty dollar. If you buy a fifty dollar coupon, they will give it to you ten dollars off. Okay. It says here on the way out, we have a ten dollar off fifty dollar coupon for their next okay. visit. All right. Does that not make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So that's it. Tonight at Kelsey's, uh, we're going to start recording at 7 o'clock, and uh, it'll be great. In the end, it'll all work out. And that show that we're recording tonight will be tomorrow's program. Mm-hmm. By the way, are we, going, are we going to go back to four days a week starting next week? Uh, it appears that way. Yeah. According to the producers, yeah. Yeah, I see it there. All right, well, we're going to have to do it. But it's for only one week, because the following week I'm taking another day off, so golf tournament. Oh, really? I told you, <laughs> told you on the uh, on the seventh, right. I have to take another day off. I'm sorry. Seventh. That is a Monday. Is it? Mm-hmm. I'm perfect. See, then we'll do a four day week and then a three day week. It'll be excellent. Mm-hmm. Are we going to have a conversation at some point about is four days too many <laughs> too, too many days for us? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I don't know. We're not getting any younger. No, we are not. But uh, what else are we going to do? Like, well, exactly. It's different <laughs> when it's nice out, but it's shitty all the time. Starting soon. <laughs> it's, starting, so, it's shitty all the time. Starting, starting soon. soon. Okay. Well, fun. So why not? All right. Let's uh, let's do. Uh, I get three. up at this time anyway. Even on the weekend, I get <laughs> no, up. No, I know. Time. Why not just come down here and say stupid stuff? Like, why <laughs> That's not? right. It's not like I'm not awake. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's do three. Well, like we'll get a couple in right now. And then we will uh, Hi guys. continue after Hi guys. Uh, Larry Fedor. So here we go with emails. Okay, subject matter, Humble and Fred Beer on the road. This is from Fred Ball. And, of course, he starts at, of course, he can't just be normal. He's got to say, hey, fuckheads. Hi, guys. <laughs> I read okay. this because it's, a, it's an interesting, it's everybody's worst nightmare. It is mine. 
and this has never really happened to me, but I, I've thought about it many times. Anyway, he said, uh, Fred says we, him and Nancy, made a last-minute decision to take a vacation and drove to Revelstoke, B.C. to see their son, Andrew. Along the way, stopped in Moose Jaw for the night, and uh, he took a picture of our beer uh, in front of the arena, I believe, Howard. There. That's right, the Moose Jaw Warriors arena. Very yeah. cool. Thank you, Freddie. Anyway, listen to this. He says, the first leg was to Thunder Bay. We were 70 kilometers from Thunder Bay, and the traffic came to a stop, not moving at all, with many drivers out and walking around. <laughs> That's a bad sign. He says, I asked a uh, truck driver what's going on. He said an accident had the road closed for an investigation. We were 15K from the accident and arrived at the stoppage just before 6.30 p.m. And we did not move again until 3.45 a.m. Wow. A total of nine hours, 15 minutes sitting on the Trans-Canada. The backup was uh, past 30 kilometers. Unbelievable, wow. he writes, motherfucker. We got to the hotel at 4.30. I guess they had pre-booked it, used the bathroom, and left. He said, I paid 300 bucks to have a shit. Anyway, uh, we made it to Revelstoke, uh, and he said, have a great night tonight at Kelsey's. But, like, that has never happened to me. But I've been in some stoppages where people are out of their cars, and it's like, oh, what's this? What is this? I've been in those stoppages. I, I remember once going up to Molson Park in Barrie. Is that even there anymore? Um, by that name, I don't think. Yeah, I don't know. But Whatever that was, what it, yeah. and it was uh, ex-wife Randy and I, and it wasn't nine hours, but it was people getting out of their cars. Mm-hmm. And I remember Randy had to use the washroom mm-hmm. and finally just got got out of the car and went down the side and you know took a leak outside the, somewhere. Well, what, do you, what can you do? 6.30 p.m., to three forty-five a.m. What can you do? Mm-hmm. Let me just let Larry know we're going to be one second here. Just stand by, stand by. Okay, I'll do one. Thank you, Freddie Ball, and we're going to miss Fred and Nancy, who have been mm-hmm. such beautiful supporters of this program. Which one can I do really quickly here that I thought would be? Oh, this will be good. <laughs> this is a good one. From uh, okay, let me get the uh, sound effects because you can't have this thing. Okay. Hi guys. Hi guys. This is from our friend Tanya Hutton, who will be there tonight. <laughs> Subject line: Dan Duran. Of course, she says hi guys. hi guys. You know, gents, I have two sons, and they are both well aware that I referred to one as the really smart one, and the other is really pretty, and I just hope he marries rich one day. She goes, on to, she goes on to say, the longer I listen to you three, your personal assessments aside, meaning you and I, I realize that in your friend group, Dan Duran is the pretty one. <laughs> in fact, every three to four weeks, I become increasingly curious as to how he's managed to stay alive to the age of 66. Mm-hmm. Please yeah. never stop discussing anatomy with Dan. It's comedy gold. Cheers. Says Tanya. <laughs> Goddamn right, it's funny. Yeah, like I, you know, listen. We all, both of us, know and admire the many, many talents that Dan possesses. I mean, the obvious ones: his voice, his ability to project on camera, all that. And, and but of course, his kind heart, his his ability to <laughs> his ability to fix things. He just finished doing a dog for Ye Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when Dan it comes to kind, but when yeah, I said that, but when it comes to things like what, how long he's been working with us, or what goes on in his on the insides of him, yeah, it is, it's quite something. You know, I have to think of being like that. You know, sometimes you know, ignorance is bliss, and I, I, I don't mean ignorant in a in a bad way, but ignorance is bliss. You know that yeah. saying, and being oblivious to things makes life a little easier because I'm, uh, you know, sometimes I get a little obsessed with what's going on in the United States because I worry about what it could, how it could affect us. And I think, what about that guy over here? There might be a guy over there that doesn't even know what's going on, doesn't even pick up the paper, doesn't look at this stuff. He just comes home, watches a movie and a hockey game, and it's not even part of his world. Yes, I know. And then, but what the thing is with Dan, though, see, none of that stuff can really come back to bite you in the ass, obsessing over politics. But when it's your health... 
It's a different area. No, I know. You have to keep pushing them and pushing them and pushing them. I know. You know? I know. No, I, uh, I agree. Sometimes I think I got to take right. a break from being too aware. Exactly. And then just watch, and then just you know sit at sit at home like, and watch some dim dumb movie till I go to bed. I don't know. Yeah, I'm playing a lot of Tragical Hip this week. I don't care because I've been thinking a lot about the Tragical Hip since that documentary. And uh, anyway, here's uh, our good friend, a man who we were hoping we would see tonight, but apparently there is a story behind. The fact that El Fed can't make it. Welcome yeah. back to the program. His podcast, of course, later that same life. And as always, a welcome guest on this podcast. Now about to celebrate 13 years of podcasting. Here's Larry Fedoric, everybody. Wow. Uh, good morning. Congratulations, guys. That's terrific. It is. We, yeah. We're uh, sad you won't be there in person. We were hoping you'd bring us a nice gift. <laughs> well, I, I can still uh, send an Amazon gift card. <laughs> oh, yes, you could. Actually. Yeah, you know, I mean, listen, whatever, whatever's in your heart, Larry, do okay. what's ever in your heart. Um, now, we, you know, if I'd have known that you were, that would it be too much aggravation or trouble to get there by transit, I would have arranged. We would have arranged. I could have given you a ride. Well, I couldn't. Uh, plus, all the hotel rooms are booked around there, so it's going to be. Uh, it's you can't get a flight in. It's uh, just <laughs> that's right. It's very yeah. busy because of the uh, the celebration. But more yeah. importantly, Larry had a fall, Fred. No, I heard this and uh, concerns me. It's it really does. If you want to instantly feel old, yeah, have a fall. Mm-hmm. It's it's not it wasn't even an old person fall. Even though I'm an old person and I had a fall, it wasn't an old person fall. And it it's just it's so I don't know. That's all I can think about. It's like I'm just uh, I have PTSD now from my fall. I can't walk anywhere. I'm like oh I gotta. It's it's ridiculous. A, a Sunday afternoon, a, a, just over a month ago. It's like four in the afternoon. It's a beautiful day. It's a sunny day. It's perfect weather. I've got good shoes on, mm. laced up sneakers. I run across the street to the grocery store. I'm running back, cutting through the parking lot, and the parking lot's kind of busy. So I said to myself, well, I'm just going to negotiate this grassy little boulevard here, uh, go to the bike path, and then there's another little piece of grass, and then there's a sidewalk. So fine. So I, I look down and I step up onto, onto the curb. I managed to do that. And then uh, on my next step, I'm looking left and right at the bike path for any oncoming bike traffic. And and my uh, foot catches a tree stump, a little little tree stump about the size of the head of a baseball bat around and only about three inches high that they never properly removed. Mm-hmm. And it's hidden in the grass. So you, you can't see it, even if you're looking for it. <laughs> And I start to go down. And I don't know if you have a feeling when you trip, mm. you for a split second, you think you can save it. <laughs> You're gonna, I'm going to save this. I'm going to take big, giant running steps. I'm going to look stupid, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to fall. And then the, in split seconds, I'm not going to make it. Oh, no. You know, that kind of like, I'm going down. So where did you oh, land? No. What parts of your old man body did you land on? So my right knee hits the pavement on the bike path pretty good. And I go down sort of to the right. And that 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 part of your brain where your hands are supposed to go out to save you or break the... I, I don't know what happened. They weren't talking. They weren't communicating. So I kind of hit my knee really hard. And then my right shoulder goes. Yeah. And then I remember this distinctly as I as I say it. It's just so clear in my mind still. Uh, on my right side near my cheekbone, my head bounces off the pavement. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. And I remember even at that split second thinking, this is not good. <laughs> no. Is that what you have a little contusion on your nose? Is that what that's from? Um, or that's just where your glasses go? Okay, maybe it's just the light. Just, yeah. Okay. So uh, it's it's kind of, it's there's a blood vessel on my eye now, and it's kind of healed on my right, right. side pretty quickly. But anyway, my head bouncing off, and I, and I come to a stop. I, I jer- and my knuckles at some point had scraped the ground, and so I'm bleeding like knee, shoulder, face, knuckles, lying there. And 
uh, the one thing was faith in humanity restored because there was a guy walking his dog immediately comes up to me and crouches down is like buddy buddy you all right man you all right man buddy buddy and i remember thinking going through this like okay how 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 much pain am i in not bad mm-hmm. i'm conscious mm-hmm, mm-hmm. just kind of in shock still i guess i don't know and i finally say to the guy it's like yeah you know what i, I think i'm okay but i'm just gonna lie here <laughs> it's just gonna take a second it's gonna take yeah. stock i don't know if i want to jump up you know? <laughs> that's right go hey i'm okay wave to the crowd um, so I do. I just lie there for a second, and I'm like, I, everything feels like nothing broke, or but my head bouncing off the pavement. Nobody should have that sensation, man. It's it's. Uh, um, so I, I I managed to kind of stand up, lean up against a tree there for a second, and the the dog walker guy he goes, hey, don't go anywhere, buddy, don't go anywhere, and he runs into a store and comes back with a big wad of wet paper towels. Aww. I know. First, it was, uh, first responder. Woman, He's a first responder. Another woman comes up to me and gives me a bottle of water. And another woman stops and goes, you need any? Are you okay? What do you? And I was like, thank you. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's so I assess that I'm kind of okay. And I, um, I say to the masses, to the crowd, thank you, everyone. I'm, I just live over there. I'm going to walk home. And I got the big wad of towels on my face. Where's the groceries, uh, by the way, at this time? Uh, they, they, I didn't spill the groceries. I had, I had like three items in a in a reusable bag, and they didn't spill. I was so mm. proud of myself. Maybe, maybe that's what I was saving instead of my face. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. Was, I, well, I what saved. was your pace? Did you say you were running a bit, or just walking no, fast, or just normal just a, walking? A good walking pace. And I okay. actually, when I when I stepped onto the grassy boulevard, I actually stopped for a second because I was. I was looking left and right to see if bicycles were coming. And then I took that next step, and that's when the mm-hmm. foot caught the tree stump, and I, and I go down. So, um, yeah. anyway, I, as, I'm, as I'm walking away, a woman goes, well, at least take some pictures and call the city. Get some money out of this, at least. Yeah. Which planted the seed that I should do that. So I, I got home and took some selfies and kind of assessed my injuries and monitored myself for, like, sleepiness or dizziness or anything. I was fine. And... And uh, wrapped bandaged up. I bathed in polysporin, you know, basically, and mm-hmm. and then I was kind of okay. And uh, Tuesday, I went to a clinic and I got all the um, the assessments down on paper with a doctor, you know. And and uh, I decided it's like okay, time to call the lawyer from TV. I'm going to do this now. What the hell? Really? Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. So I called the lawyer from TV, and it's like, is this where uh, you don't get paid till I get paid, and I get a free assessment? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. So here's what happened. And uh, the, she listens, you know, and, and says, "You, you, we only do catastrophic injury. And I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, well, like loss of life or loss of limb. You mm. didn't have that, right? I go, oh, my knee really hurts. <laughs> right. My shoulder's got a scrapey. I got a thing. And she goes, oh, it's catastrophic. What you want is small claims, personal injury mm. so i'm learning all this how you, you you have 10 days to report it to the city if it's private property you, you have i think 60 days but and don't quote me on this i'm not a lawyer but i think and city property got 10 days to report it so i report it to 311 and i get a file number and then i get a uh, and the, i get another lawyer and they said no we're not going to take the case but you can do it yourself you just have to fill out a form so now i have an insurance adjuster and it's in the process i don't know so i don't want i don't want a million dollars i don't what, what do no, you want no, and let's delve into the, the the thing is what did you trip on because i've heard of this before of its negligence by the city but uh, you know a root growing out of the ground um, isn't necessarily negligent. You know what I mean? That's natural. Yeah. But was the root all, like sticking out of the sidewalk or something? Or no, it was in the grass. Uh, yeah. It was about to. It was tough they, case. Yeah, it's a tough. They, I, I, I can tell you, I, I, I had a claim. I've had. A, I've got a claim at this condo I'm in mm-hmm. against the city for negligence, where a water main burst and flooded 14 units, mm. and they wow. are. It's. It's. It's it's a process, man. It's it's they're not they're they are not set up to dish out money. But I am curious what it is. You're not looking for a million dollars. What are you looking for, Mister yeah, Fedora? Well, they they ask you without prejudice 
uh, on the one of the forms, the many forms you have to fill in without, and they say without prejudice, what is the dollar amount you are seeking? And I'm like, so what should I do? Should I go like one hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Should I go yeah, big, I or? And then I found, so I bled on a couple of items uh, at home. My bandages leaked and stuff. Yeah. So I got to. Re- that's not going to come out. I got to replace that. That's going to be a grand for this bedding and this and this. And, and then, and then I found a formula for uh, pain and suffering mm. that is used by insurance agencies for. Uh, uh, and it's like uh, 50 bucks an hour or something times. And I estimated that I was like, not for commission, but really hurting for a couple of weeks and sort of came up with around uh, 15 grand. Number. I like it. So I'm put, putting that in. And uh, and it's still the process because everything is, a, as you know how it is, process. Man. Mm-hmm. It's just, oh. Although yeah. I have a great, you know, a very cooperative insurance adjuster. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's a tree stump that there was a bunch of saplings they planted, and some didn't make it, so they cut them down, but they didn't remove the stumps. Mm. Well, there there's a gray area. But yeah, so. usually the natural stuff. So, have you got any in terms of advice uh, uh, as to how long this might take? I don't know because right now, what you have to do. This is interesting to me. Is is uh, uh, I go to a clinic. And I get a, a, a really good clinic and a really good doctor. So that was kind of nice because, you know, with just a walk-in clinic, you expect the worst. And they were the best people ever. So that was nice. So I need my medical records for an insurance claim. Okay, here's the uh, portal. Here's online. Here's where you go apply. And I'm like, I- I'm standing right here. <laughs> mm-hmm. you, you've seen my health card. You've seen my driver's license. It's me, Larry. You know mm-hmm. it's me. Right. Mm-hmm. Can't you just ha- you have a printer right there. You have my email. No. You have to go online. Uh, and I don't know. I did that two weeks ago, and I still ha- I don't know how long that takes. Well, listen. I'm happy you didn't get hurt catastrophically. And as far as old guy falls go, you know, you didn't break your hip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, and, and seriously, you didn't. Well, you, you know, yeah. you could have torn your ACL. You could have dislocated your shoulder. As a physician myself, you know, there's a, a litany of things that could have gone wrong. You could have gotten a concussion. You know, when you bounce your head off the ground. Yeah. You yeah, know, there's yeah, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, I mean, yes, your your injuries might only be worth fifteen grand, but that's you know, that's not nothing. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not well, nothing. I have thought of that in that I didn't, I got, I got x-rays done and all that. I didn't break anything, That's including, good. you know, you could easily break orbital up here in the yes. face. Uh, all those x-rays, everything's fine. So I thought, okay, old guy falls down uh, on a sunny day, but didn't break anything, didn't get a concussion, healed fairly quickly, um, and, and wasn't really out of commission for any uh, great amount of time. So yeah. maybe... Maybe that's positive sign. Hey, listen, you know what the most old guy thing about this is, though? What? It's the, all the time you have to fuck around with this. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> oh, I was going to say that. What would, all the what time. Would, what would, what would uh, talk show host Larry from years gone by, where would you have got this to? <laughs> that's right. I don't know. This is the only, this only, only a retired guy could put this kind of effort into this uh, um, undertaking. But well, you know, the, yeah. On, on the form, it says, how much work did you miss? I'm, well, <laughs> well, I do a podcast once a week on nicknames. <laughs> <laughs> it is at our age, though, it is scary. And, you know, that's sort of an inadvertent thing where it's sort of an accident accident. Yeah. But I. You know, I stop myself with so many things now. Like, do I want to go up on that ladder? Do I want to ride this bike? Because I'm so afraid of hurting myself. Yeah. Even last week, Dan Duran was working on our buddy Darren's dock. And at one point, I was helping him carry lumber. And he wanted me to carry out onto this this platform that had no, it had no floor. It was all these joists and everything. And I put the board down. I said, no, Dan, I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. I'd like to help you, but I am not doing that. No, I know. Because I could have seen myself going ass over tea kettle for what, you know? You know, I, I was uh, I started snowboarding in my mid forties and I did it up until my mid fifties. And I remember I remember it was actually with our friend uh Fred Ball who we were talking about earlier. I was up uh with Ball and uh we were doing some spring skiing or boarding 
And I remember that was my last time because when I fell, I was probably 54 or 55 at the time, I yeah. fell so hard. And uh, somebody came up to me and went, are you? I was laying there just like you. <laughs> he said, are you OK? And I went, no, I don't think I am. I <laughs> just and because I I just didn't so, want to hurt myself like that again. A couple of weeks ago, I turned off the lights on my way upstairs, and I have an island between the uh, living room, the dining room, and the kitchen, and walked into it with my left hip. That was two okay. and a half weeks ago. It still hurts. <laughs> That's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no. ten years ago, I would have been like, oh, I, I walked into I walked into something. I'm fine now. But as far as like riding bikes or doing stuff maybe you shouldn't do at our age. I mean, you could easily get an injury that you could die with. You know what I mean? That just nagging and uh, chronic and No, but that's an interesting but, but that's could do an that with an accident too, I know. But that's an interesting yeah. distinction. Yeah. Not die from, die with. Oh yeah. That you could have like, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes you know what you could have done something to your shoulder that you would be it would be one of those things you always had that thing because mm-hmm. you know when yeah. we were younger it would come and go now yes. sometimes those things come and they just stay that's right yeah it's very much so well Although, i'm glad um, you're all right thanks man i the, the guy the insurance adjuster said um send me a picture of uh, the tree stump which i took the next day i went back the next day <laughs> and, and, and then and then he and send me a picture of the shoes you were wearing i'm like you want do you want a picture of the injury or anything he's like no just the shoes you were wearing because like you know i'm i'm cruising along in flip-flops allegedly and it's like yeah but no i had good laced up shoes sneakers and and, and <laughs> so he goes i'm gonna have to show up one day and take the picture of a stump myself as well so that's great and i'm like well you, you've got my number call me because you'll never find it and sure enough, about three days later, the phone rings, and it's the guy. It's the insurance adjuster. And he's like, yeah, I'm across the street, man. I can't find this thing. Where's your stump? Um, aha. <laughs> aha. Again, so you had to go out and show him the stump. <laughs> What's that, what? You had to go out and show him the stump? I, well, I, also, I, walk, I was going to actually go across the street, and then I thought, well, I, I had to fake a limp. And, and so I thought... Right. I'm going to just uh, describe, are you near the fire hydrant? Okay, go the other way. And I did that thing and described, and he found it, and he goes, wow, this is really hard to find. And I'm like, okay, there you go. Maybe that works in my favor. You know, what I'm laughing at, too, I don't know about you, Freddie, but there's like somewhere there's a guy (laughs) who's got a file, says Larry Fedoric, and then, you know, on his uh, agenda that day, go stump recon. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, or not, even the picture of the shoes. You could just bullshit. You know what I mean. Even if you were wearing flip flops, right? You could just. Well, I guess, but and the picture. But you're of an my, honest man. You're an honest man. The picture of my leg that I took when I got home with uh, the bleeding knee and everything, because the knee really took the brunt of it. It really looked bad, yuck. Mm. But anyway, um, there's the shoe at the end of it. Oh, so, okay. I don't know. Oh, right. No, but I'm yeah, the same yeah. as Patterson. As soon as you said flip, I thought, well, you know, this is where insurance fraud, this is where it comes from. People that try and finagle the truth to kind, you know, to get more money out of uh, an accident. Everybody, everybody's against insurance fraud until there's an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then... I, on that day, I was I was going to have a sh- I was due for a shower and a shave, but I thought, well, I'll go across the street first, come back, and then I'll have a nice long shower, make some food, and so the picture of my face is uh, a, an old man with white stubble on his face and blood running down. <laughs> it's like it's like it's like Steve Buscemi in Fargo. <laughs> you should see the other guy. Um, <laughs> Which is the story I would say. People say, hey, what happened? And I would go, you should see the other guy. That was my line because I didn't want to admit I, I tripped and fell on the street. Well, you know, it's coming for all of us, Lawrence. It's coming for everybody. They, uh, you know, they, they and this, this balance thing is no joke. That, uh, that one of the things that contributes to aging, one of the main ones, is when people can no longer balance themselves. You see these things online yeah. where they talk about, can you still stand up from sitting? And, mm-hmm. and uh, I just think it's funny, the three of us, can you imagine the con- this conversation 20 years ago? You know, I am no. not standing up the way I used to. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's true that balance and keeping your body fit enough to have it is a, uh, is a big thing. Uh, Preventer of uh, you know what what not that you didn't have ba- or don't have balance but is it about the core? Well, it's about everything you know. 
Sure it is. You know, and, and uh, I think even the stuff that I do for golf is I, I, I went from concentrating on strength to concentrating on uh, flexibility. And by right. by being more flexible, it, it has strengthened my core. Anyway, uh, Larry, um, even, even at my house here, like the stairs going upstairs, coming down now, not so much up. It just feels different than it used to a few mm-hmm. years ago. For whatever reason, what you just described, Howard, as far as balance goes, things change. Uh, they do. Nate Bergetzi does a joke about his parents finally moving into a house that has no steps whatsoever, and they're looking mm. for a house where they can always walk downward. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I, 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 I'm a huge fan of his. I, Isn't he amazing? I, I am. You know, I have liked him for a long time, and I had tickets to see him. Uh, my daughter bought them for me for Hanumas, uh, Hanukkah and Christmas, and uh, and we neither of us could could make it. But yeah, I've, uh, there's a guy I would love to see. Hey, listen, okay. everybody, Larry's yeah. uh, podcast is called Later That Same Life, and it's just these kind of things. It's stories about real life. His latest uh, episode is about nicknames, and it comes out. Uh, I don't even know. I don't know when it comes out. Well, the new ones come out on Thursday mornings, and they pop also Wednesday night on my YouTube channel for all the members get early uh, access to the next episode. Nicknames is already up there if you want to give it a listen. Okay, well, I, we were... I, I thought we would get to nicknames, but uh, I, think <laughs> we, I think we explored... Uh, all that we needed to with uh, Larry Fedorik, and uh, I've been playing a lot of uh, hip stuff this week because of the. Uh, you've seen the uh, the hip uh, documentary yet? I have not. I have not. I heard about it at TIFF, and I was like, it's on my uh, list. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's wonderful. It's just wonderful. You know what it will do? It'll oh. kill some of those old guy hours that we have. You know, we're just kind of like mm-hmm. middle of the afternoon going, what should I do? I guess I yeah, could watch. I need something to watch. Yeah, I, I guess I could watch so. four hours of the hip documentary. Thanks, my friend Larry Fedorik, everybody. Thank you. Have a great night. Congratulations again, guys. Thanks, Thank buddy. you. Going to miss you, Tara. Good boy. Bye. Let me tell you about a company called Boron One, Fred. Let me tell you. The news is happening. Go to boronone.com. Just go latest news. Boron One announces this was September 10th. First closing of financing. I mean, there's just stuff going there all the time. Because it's a company that is endeavoring to do what very few junior mining companies can do or ever get to is take a mineral out of the ground. This time it's boron. That's why they call them boron one. Uh, of course, Freddie and I make no claims about stocks but because we're nitwits. But uh, we can tell you, these guys support us. Have a look at them. See what you think. Go and find out more about this company. Go find out more about Boron and what it's it's in everything. Uh, the website is boron1.com, Fred. Hey, uh, Thursday Night Football this week. It's the Dallas struggling Dallas Cowboys. Love that. Don't like the Dallas Cowboys. Never have. They're my Montreal Canadiens of the NFL. Uh, they enter favorite Thursday night. That's tomorrow night. Playing the Giants, a sad, sad football team. Anyway, Cowboys minus uh, 240 on the money line, a five and a half point pick. I get these numbers from Bodog. Whether you're a sports better, a horse racing fan, a poker, or a casino player, Bodog, your number one source of online gambling entertainment from their industry leading odds, world class sports book, to their fully loaded casino and race book. They've been providing Canadian players with an unparalleled gaming experience since 1995. Four. That is Bodog. Have I seen you since uh, we watched the Bills on Monday night? I guess not. No. That was a crazy game, man. That Josh Allen has got uh, a lot going on. Yeah, I think they're playing Baltimore this week. This will be a test. They're three and zero right now, but uh, Baltimore will be a test. I believe the game's in Baltimore. Although the Ravens haven't played as well as people expected so far, so looking forward to that. And I'm, uh, you know, when the uh, game started, and I saw that uh, who are they playing again? Uh, Tampa Bay? No, no uh, Jacksonville. Jacksonville. When I saw that Jacksonville was uh, so the, the Bills were two and zero. Jacksonville was zero two, and I thought, oh, this isn't great because you know the Jacksonville is going to be really hyped up to want to win because they haven't won yet. This might be one of those games that Buffalo loses, and then Buffalo scored immediately. In fact, mm-hmm. made, scored, I think, was it five plays in a row? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I would have five, a, possessions, five yeah. possessions in a row they scored, and Josh Allen was just ridiculous. So that game was quickly over. But I would think the same thing. At some point, 
they have to lose a game. Or do they? Of course. Or do they? Well, yeah. Why do they have to? (laughs) Well, history dictates yes. I know. There's only been one team in the history of the league that's gone undefeated. Uh, Who? Let me think. Let me see if I could guess. Well, actually, two regular season. Um, One one was... Only uh, one that went all the way. One was New England. Yes, but they lost the Super Bowl. They lost the Super Bowl. And who was the one that went undefeated and won the Super Bowl? 72 Dolphins. Okay. Mm -hmm. Was that Don Shula's team? Yes. Okay. There you go. Uh, Listen. Kick Warfield. Right. Yeah. Let me tell you about a great team. Bob Greasy. Mm. (laughs) Let me tell you about a great team. That we have uh, access to the retirement Sherpa team. Oh, oh right. Oh, yeah. Right on. Right on. Right on. Re- I love this man. I love this man. The I retirement Sherpa, that's a team that there's, do you want to talk about an undefeated team? The retirement, the Sherpa is undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would like to say the same thing for his college team, but we don't want to, we don't talk about that right now. You know, I don't want to bring up unpleasantness. I'm not sure not if doing well? started yet. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Good morning, my boys. Uh, here he is, Tim.Nibble at RaymondJames.ca. We were just talking about Buffalo on a heater, as the kids like to say, three games in a row. And the last game I watched, uh, I was texting with Fred, and we were all excited about how... Good, Josh Allen is playing. I, I don't. I know you have a, a, a college team that you support. I can't remember the name of them. But uh, what uh, what's your what's your NFL team? The Bills definitely, and then the, the Buccaneers from uh, the Florida Connection as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, my little NFL story is: uh, I fell down, went boom, metaphorically in a survivor pool. I picked five teams, and I'm gone after three weeks of the uh, <laughs> NFL season. Wow. Well. I was out after two weeks. The second week, I was out. But, I mean, in the NFL this year, the upsets, the teams that have won that shouldn't have, it's it's staggering, especially not this past week, the week before. It was crazy. That's how, how I How did the uh, Cincinnati game handle? And I know they were falling. They, they were, the Bengals were behind during the – because they were playing during the Bills game, and I yeah. kept seeing the score, but they were uh, they were losing. Yeah, they lost, I believe. Yeah, the and, Commanders uh, uh, beat them. Uh, so Cincinnati's an example. Week one, they were the most favored team in the survivor yeah. pool, and I think it's happened every week. The most favored team has gone down uh, in flames, so that uh, creates a lot of turmoil in there. I'm, I'm much better at picking investments, thankfully. Excuse my ignorance. What is a survivor pool? Well, you it's, get to... Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Tim. Oh, no worries. Uh, so you get to pick one team... Every week, you can't use the same team twice throughout the year. Mm-hmm. And if they win, you're still moving on. And if they lose, you're uh, waiting until next right. year. But the key to it is, Howard, once you pick a team, you cannot pick them again. So right. each week, your selection is uh, less, so to speak. Well, um, you are right. I mean, it, it, listen, maybe when it comes to picking the NFL teams for a survivor pool, this isn't your guy. But when it comes to picking <laughs> investments... <laughs> As you just said, it's nothing. It, it's all about sur- survival. And where shall we start this week, young man? Well, uh, quickly, I'll just mention a plot that I got this week. I was with a long-term client on uh, Monday, and uh, he's uh, been in uh, wives, uh, actually, uh, clients for over 30 years and somebody used to work with. And I, I just got a super nice note. Thanks for managing our wealth uh, over the years and uh, you know, there's been life changes and spouse changes and kid changes and job changes and moving and, and, and so, you know, looking back over those decades, there's been a heck of a lot of things that changed, but, uh, thankfully we've been together and still are, and he's uh, a happy client. Well, isn't that nice? That's wonderful. Yeah, it feels good to get that stuff, right? That's part of the gig that's the best uh, part. Now, the nuts and bolts matter for Mm -hmm. sure. So today, I just wanted to mention about taxation. You know, too often in life, certainly in finances, we worry about things we can't control, like maybe a certain election down in uh, the States or something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, with taxes, we know exactly how they work. Maybe we wish they were different sometimes in certain ways, but we know exactly how we work, uh, how it works, yet... Far too often, uh, you know, investors and even advisors don't really shape the investments in alignment with the tax laws. 
Yeah. So again, that just adds to the strategy and, you know, someone in your position, right? You have to figure it all out. And and frankly, it's not that complicated, Fred, Mm -hmm. but you got to pay attention to Mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've talked in the past about the power of compounding over time. If you make 1% more, that makes an incredible difference over time. Doesn't seem too short term, but uh, I mean, people can be costing themselves a heck of a lot more than 1% if they don't have their tax uh, ducks in a proverbial row, right? right? You you definitely want to get every... uh, You know, I mentioned in the notes there... um, it's basically their gimmies, you know, mm-hmm. as us golfer types would say. They're just little short things you should be able to put into the uh, the cup, mm-hmm. no problem. But a lot of people again don't don't pay attention to and, it. And also, I think you know we've you know we've had you on the program as a friend and a sponsor and a contributor to the content for a long time. And and again, it's good to remind people that part of what the Sherpa team does in terms of investing for you is also to counsel some of the best ways to you know keep more money through better taxation planning yeah it, it's vital right we got people coming in tomorrow uh, again geez they're they're probably 30 uh year clients as well uh you know he's just about to retire and and turning 71 and having to do riffs and uh now arguably it's more important on the way up before you get to that stage, how you structured everything, how mm-hmm. much you got in TFSAs, have you used insurance to create wealth, any any number of other uh, parts. But, yeah, you you got to build the house properly, uh, so to speak, to, to get your income out properly. Well, that's another thing people don't often talk about. We've had conversations about, you know, like, yeah, it's great. You have all these investments, but there's a strategy and you need to be strategic about how you get to w- how and when you start taking them out. Right. So TFSA is an example of that. You know, from a taxation point of view, there's no tax to it. Uh, that's the TF in the tax free part. Right. But a lot of people will have interest bearing things in there, which to some degree makes sense because interest would attract tax. But if this is the one that's going to attract the least amount of tax of all your investments, you probably want all things being equal. You probably want your best growth potential in there Be- because mm-hmm. if 10 grand grows to 15 grand, okay, you saved some money. But if 10 grand grows to 25 grand, uh, you-, you definitely want that part to be tax free. You don't <laughs> yeah. want to be paying anything on it. You probably want your interest bearing items in a, in an RSP instead as an example. Mm-hmm. You know, I've often thought a great idea for the government, especially for someone uh, as us, you know, approaching uh, our senior years and going to be taking our money out. I think the government should say, you know what, here's what we're going to do now. We taxed, we gave you the tax break going up. Coming out, there's just a 10% flat, flat tax. That's it. That's all you have to pay as a senior because we want you to have good senior years. Mm-hmm. Just 10% flat That's right, tax. 10%. Wouldn't you love to 10% see that? for seniors. Yeah, 10%. That's, that's, I'd that's, run on that. Run on <laughs> yeah, that. Exactly. <laughs> that's what, Maybe that's, let Jagmeet know about that platform. Exactly. That, you, you, want to talk about, you want to talk about a non-confidence vote. <laughs> you know, what I like, uh, well, there's so many things to like about the experience, but it all begins with a conversation. And another, listen, if you're not with the uh, Sherpa, that's, that's on you. But it, the Sherpa, the team, Jay, and everybody would be happy to have a look at what's going on with your portfolio and... You know, maybe suggest some things that might be better for you. As always, Tim dot Niblet at RaymondJames.ca. Thanks, so Timmy. just in closing, have fun uh, tonight there. It's about 12 minutes uh, walk from my place, but I won't be able to make it. I don't think we've got a, a celebration of life for my father-in-law today. So that's a little higher, mildly higher than humble. And I get it. I, I think there's a rumor that uh, Sherpa J may be making the scene as well. So there be some representation. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And Tim just promised that uh, Howard and I, you'll come to our celebration of lives, okay? I promise. That'll, that'll be first priority that day. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks, Timmy. Enjoy, boys. Have a great day. I, uh, I hope I didn't speak at a school there. I don't know what I, th- I think. I thought I saw Jay is going to be there. Thanks, Timmy. It says, uh, blah, 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 Jay. I do appreciate listening back. I'm on this show. This is Howard friend, Tim makes me. Um, well, he lives in that way, does he not? 
uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I think I maybe uh, may I saw that somewhere. I don't know. I could be wrong. You know, I'm old. Uh, by the way, I love what you said. And we know as we are entering our. A says he's there tonight, according to our producer. Okay, well that's perfect. That's all I need to know. When you said uh, for guys like us entering our senior years, I'm like, we are in it, man. We are in it. You meant yeah. you meant entering the years where you have to start taking because you can only have RSPs in Canada until age 71. They have to convert them and start using them. Yeah, riffs. Yeah, and fuck. Fucking, you know, that's... And, you know, even that can cause problems on but, certain levels. You know, but anyway. Think about... And I what you said about being only taxed 10%. Think about all the years mm-hmm. you, you, we paid taxes. You know, yeah. I've, had, I've had a job. You know, I had a couple jobs as a kid. I, I worked at a golf course. So, yes, I made m- m- money, but never made enough to pay taxes. I had a job at Wilco. There used to be a company mm-hmm. in Canada called Wilco. And I probably... I never made it. I was like 15, 16, 17, before 17. And uh, but I started paying taxes for real when I was 17 years old. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And at 71, you don't think all those years of us being taxed that we could get a senior tax break? Well, I, I, again, I st- I'm kidding when I say that, but you know they worry about CPP and they worry about the welfare of seniors and medical costs and everything. Why not do it that way rather than taking it in? Why not? You know, just give you a break instead. And I mean, reduce tax rates for seniors. Absolutely. Because at, it, the, the way it's all structured, you're taxed like it's a job. Whatever you take out, it's like it's a job. Right. So reduce that. And it's money that you put away mm-hmm. after paying taxes on it. And hopefully mm-hmm. it, you get someone like Tim, your money mm-hmm. grows. So you're now taxed on the fact that you... You made the money, it, the money grew, now you're taxed on that, and then when you yeah. take it out when you have no income, theoretically, well, that's, mm-hmm. that's the whole thing. Is there, you know, they're saying, well, you'll have no income, so you won't be taxed as much, but you're still taxed on money you were already taxed on. I'm getting behind this, by the way, you can yeah, tell. Yeah, but the thing is, if you have RSPs, their argument is you got the tax break going in, and now you're getting the tax breaks actually better going out because you're making less. But, again, it's... You know, they need to give seniors. And I'm not just saying that. <laughs> yeah. Seniors. Yeah. They've got to give seniors yes, a better they tax do. deal. Tax breaks for seniors. Oh, you know, because I'll tell you what. If they don't, more and more you're going to see seniors. Yes, it happens. Avoiding paying taxes. Just, go, you know, taking their money out of the country, maybe to Mexico. Yeah. Putting it in the bank and saying, come and get me, fuckers. That's going right. to be it. Come or and get it. If you don't me. have enough, dog food sales will skyrocket. Oh, yeah. And dog food. Yeah. And one thing I will say, I have been uh, feeding Stan, the dog. Mm-hmm. I have now augmented his dry kibble with a third of a can of wet dog food every day because he's old and I think he deserves it and it's, mm-hmm. he loves it. But I can tell you one thing. It's I can I could not see eating it. It's I, every time I spoon it out, and that it's just gross. No, I know. I mean, when I was a kid, we used to feed our dog Barney. It was called Romar ninety, and it, literally, you open the can and it smelled like poop. Yeah, well, this it actually did. Yeah, this doesn't smell like poo, but it's just it's just gross. Yeah, Dan uh, is frozen now, looking. <laughs> Dan's back, but he's frozen. This is uh, interesting. We were talking about ta- uh, taxes. We need to talk <laughs> no, about don't. something he can relate to. <laughs> he's gone. I was. <laughs> you caught when I said, you know, there are some seniors that will avoid paying taxes altogether. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny! <laughs> it's a little humble and Fred oh, funny, but just for us. Oh yeah, he's just gone. He didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> um, I don't know what we should do about. Oh, here he comes. Do you want to do a couple more emails? Well, you know what we could do? We could save them. We could save well, them. To... Like, we're not going to do emails tonight, are we? Oh, no, no. No. So we're not going to no, do them tonight. Just, I, I will say, um, over the past week, the reaction to Brad Jones from the funeral uh, home and Dr. Nam. Yeah. Uh, the reaction was fantastic. Yeah, People very love good. Love those segments. So informative, you know. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We, we're going to be back Monday with a regular show, and we've got lots of time we'll spend with some emails there. Because I think we should yeah. acknowledge uh, 
bunch of people that have sent us notes, and of course we have to come up with a, a new Zoom theater. How about who? Who did we read? Who did you read already this morning? Uh, Fred Ball, Richard Bullis, Richard Fred, Bullis. No, no, I know. I'm talking about who, we read one email. Oh, all right, Fred Ball. What was the email I read? Oh, from we've already done to Tanya Hutton. Tanya. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what we'll do but, tonight? Why don't we do this? Tonight we'll pick somebody from the audience, Dan. Right. Right. And we will award them Zoom theater status. Okay. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um. It doesn't but have to be good. an email. It can just be somebody from the audience. That's what I just right. said. Somebody oh, that, okay. at, at, the, at the Kelsey's thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, no, a quick example, though, of how Humble and Fred Radio, Radio, Humble and Fred Podcast works. This one was just called Funeral Dude, and it says, Hi, guys. Loved, loved Brad's honesty. He's the real deal. You can tell he's seen a lot. Such an amazing, understanding person. He's got my business. I'm old, really old. And this was from a guy like Christopher Welch. Like, he loved the Brad Jones segment. Yeah. And a couple of other people said to us, like, when they heard that, I was like, how? What are they going to do with this? And uh, we gave an example. And, I mean, we've just scratched the surface with that guy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll do that. Thank you, Christopher Welch, for that feedback. I've sent that to our client and uh, already received something from Brad saying, looking forward to the next one. Great feedback. So, tonight we will... What? I was just thinking the other day, I was talk, talking to Delisa about this guy. And I said, well, that's gonna, what's that going to be like, though, when I'm on my way out and you're going, it's okay, Freddie, just let go. You can go. It's your time. Go, Freddie. Let mm. go. Yeah. Don't fight it, pal. Don't fight it. And she said, stop saying that. It really agitated her. Mm-hmm. But it was a little moment. Yeah, she, she you know, got, she, you know, the thing is, is, she pretends to be agitated. But, you know, in reality, she was like, oh, fuck, finally. Finally. Yeah. Here, here, Freddie, let me put this pillow over your face. That's right. This pillow will make you more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember if this it's came like up. cubes in your mouth. Yeah, okay. I can't remember if this came up on the show, but I was telling uh, my new friend about this game I used to play with my kids. I'm talking about this, how I, when I would... Yeah, I told you that when I would have a nap in the afternoons and I, I had the kids with me and I wanted to sort of drift off while they were playing and we used to play this game called Daddy's on His Deathbed. <laughs> it's a fun little game for children. And they would come over and I'd say, Charlie, is that you? Yes, Daddy. Yes, Daddy. It's okay. It's honey. Daddy's on his deathbed. He needs to just close his eyes. Um, okay, so that's Christopher Welch, but we will pick somebody tonight. <clears throat> And they will become the new Zoom Theater recipient, and they will hear them. They will hear Dan Duran, the great Dan Duran, uh, mention them as we close the program tonight. So we'll just go with Richard Bullis. But we still For have the, we yeah we still have the Dan Duran news though. Let's not get carried right, away. We do. It's ready to go. Dan Duran news today brought to you by Bodog. Uh, for my last email, we are on board. Looking for a fast break from working so hard. <sighs> When you're ready to box out some time for fun, you know it's time to play. It's easy to find your next favorite game at Bodog.net. We make getting the latest basketball odds and free sports tips a slam dunk. Visit Bodog.net today. Hashtag make a play. No. No. Here's to a fella named Dan Duran, a hell of a guy with a hell of a big wang, the quintessential anchor man. His voice is nice and low. Ho! Dan Duran, the anchor man, comes as fast for credentials he has none. Can't tell a headline from his bum, but his voice is nice and low. Dan Duran, the anchor man's here. He's prone to falling off his chair, but he's got a big wang, so he don't care, and his voice is nice and low. My voice is nice and low. And now live from his fancy pants trailer. Oh, look, it's so well appointed with a big TV in it. It's such. I'll bet it even has air conditioning. Oh, yes, it does. It does. And now it's it's befitting. It's it's the kind of accommodations that befits a movie anchor man of his stature. With news and views, here's Dan Duran. 
70s UK rock band Uriah Heep announced their farewell tour. <laughs> Alex Jones' Infowars will be auctioned off in the fall to pay for his Sandy Hook victims. And Pierre Polyev is so pissed at CTV that conservatives will no longer do interviews with Bell affiliated media. But let's talk about exploding trees yes. in Denmark. <laughs> In Denmark, in public parks, when dangerous trees threaten park goers, they blow them up with dynamite. So instead of chainsaws, they go this route because a stick of dynamite is more natural. It's just like a lightning strike. So insects and birds and bats and things can use what was left of the tree for a cycle of life stuff. And the park goers don't have to look at the uh, chainsaw scar in a big tree. They can just see, you know, fractured wood and know oh, that's an interesting. And so there you go. Remember, just like organic foods, dynamite is more natural. Hmm. Wow. That is fascinating. Yes. I like to be there. No, nothing yeah. like watching stuff blow up. Yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. Just follow those those park workers around for a while. <laughs> this age, I like to be anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Just show up someplace. Dan, do you have uh, new uh, covers on your headphones? Like, there's a like yeah, you know, they are new about six months ago. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ago, yeah. just, Thanks for noticing. I just noticed that you have a blue tinge to your headphones. Are you going to be yeah. are you going to be bringing those headphones tonight? Absolutely. Yes. I hey. mean, I had the choice of black or this lovely blue teal color. Which okay. I thought, well, well, it's very nice. You know, Freddie, you are you going to wear them? headphones tonight? Are you going to wear? I think you should. What? 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 Wear headphones. Wear head- Why? Why should I? What? 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 I can't wear what I'm wearing now. Only I just I I can't remember what you wore at Christmas time. But I thought we were all wearing headphones so that we can actually because of the no, outside noise. Listen, oh, you, good let, point. Do Maybe I will. Yeah. Yes, I got I got them. I got them. It's like how, it's how, see how quickly he gets so fucking cranky. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, Fred, you should wear headphones. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't go. Well, I went. What? Con- what? Constantly on defense. It defensive. was more inquisitive. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I didn't. I, I should know your tones better by now. What? Yeah, what? You should. That, uh, you it was know, more really. like inquisitive. Oh, like, my, well, my mistake. <laughs> <laughs> my mistake. Well, get to know me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I should. I really should be able to de- decipher your uh, the signs. What? What? Because I thought it was a cranky what what, but it was more of an inquisitive what what. Okay, my day to day these thing these day to day these things. I I just I like because my ears get hot. Eh? No, I know. And God forbid, you get hot know. ears. Yeah, oh, seriously. Yeah. Uh, if I wear those things, yeah, like it really, just, yeah. Oh, I like this better. Okay, Dan, wow. the man's ears get warm. Mm-hmm. I get it now, but yeah. I, you know, I just what, never like, experienced that problem. Well, we we worked together at a radio station where you wore these headphones for years. Little did I know you were on your way home with wet wipes, cooling down, <laughs> <laughs> cooling down your earlobes. But I always God. wore it. I just wore it on one side too. <clears throat> but yeah. anyway. Yeah, I, I I have experimented with that sometimes during like I have I have the one ear off just because I uh, again I can hear you too yeah. just fine. Yeah, I don't know, don't know why. Do you well, want new uh, ear pads, uh, colored ones like I have? No, I'm fine. Christmas, I'm Christmas fine with black. No, I appreciate that. I still have your Christmas present in a bag behind me. Yeah, I know. You're, you're very appreciative of it. I do. I, I am appreciative of twice. it. Well, no, yeah, it's the thought that counts, it right? Is. So he'll, he'll use it eventually. So tonight, uh, our beers available. We've covered that. Humble and Fred trivia, live Q and A. Bill Brio, Ralph Ben Mergie. We're going to have some other people that we will be talking to. And, and again, if you have, if you're coming and you have some uh, questions you've always wanted to ask, by all means. And uh, great food, by the way. The other thing I didn't mention is what kind of food there's going to be. We mentioned the pricing, but there's going to be lots of food for our audience. Kind of wings and, and dishes. I don't have it in front of me right now, but good finger food. foodie things. Finger yep. foodie things, exactly. And of course, you can also uh, order off the Kelsey's menu. Lots of great things to eat. I recommend again that chicken sandwich, the buffalo chicken sandwich I had a couple of weeks ago was outstanding. It really was. I still think about it. Yeah, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, are you going to stay till the end of the podcast? Or I won't. I'll have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there at five for the uh, load in, as we roadies say. 
Yeah. But uh, I'll be leaving before the end of the podcast because, you know, I can't. <laughs> yeah. I just can't be. I can't be around people. Minutes. It's a 47 minute mark. I'll be gone. And just so the peoples know, um, tonight's show will be tomorrow mornings. So the Thursday show will be tonight's broadcast, live broadcast. Are we, uh, speaking of that, I, will we be going live on Facebook tonight? I think that's a, a call of the place. Well, I because, and, and I say, uh, let me answer my own question. The answer is no, because I, I because everyone's laptops will be, like our, our cameras will be in, in different positions. So there will be no live broadcast tonight. Right. Because it would just look dumb. We would be looking, because well, I won't be looking into my computer the way I'm looking yeah. into these cameras now. Yeah. Well, I could put a, uh, you know, I've got a webcam here. I could put that on a on a stick and then... You know. What stick is that, Dan? That would be a tripod. Oh. Is that what you is that what you do in your in your, in your bedtimes? <laughs> is it okay. Bluetooth? Yeah. No. Not this one. Because it would be good to have it sort of at the back and showing the crowd and the stage yeah. at the front. You know what I'm saying? That would be cool. Right. You know, this whole show has gone by and there's really been no acknowledgement of well, you did say that. No, I should I take it back. Earlier in the show. You said that Dan would be, well, what, would, there was a, a chance Dan would be in the women's washroom so showing off his luggage. Yeah, yeah. Yes, so yes. Just in the a showing. A Dan Duran. A Dan Duran showing. showing. Yes. But <laughs> somebody, our Keith Weilan, not somebody, a very important somebody, Keith Weilan, has sent in another song, Dan, as yeah. a suggestion for your theme song. Would you be oh, interested okay. in hearing that? <laughs> okay. All right. Then. Here we go. I can't. Here wait. we go. There's a little track called Horsecock uh, here at Edge 102 for our uh, producer, Dan Duran. Yeah. There Didn't you go. we get another song sent this week called something like uh, I Like It in the Pooper? Yeah, I, I played that yesterday or two days oh, ago. Oh, did we? Yeah, I did. Did we yeah. play that? Oh, I did, okay. yeah. Jeez. Oh, okay. Yeah, got it. Sorry. We played that. that. That was Monday. Yeah. That's 48 hours. Give me a break. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, when you well, have a short-term memory like that, everything's yeah. new again, isn't everything it? Everything is new. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much to uh, Larry Fedora, Tim Niblett, and uh, all of you who have uh, been paying attention to this program. We will be uh, happy to see you guys all tonight and uh, look forward to you all who won't be there to hear the broadcast tomorrow. This episode of Humble and Fred was brought to you by the Retirement Sherpa, the Chambers Plan, Boron One, Bodog, our returning sponsor, Kelsey's Original Roadhouse, and our newest sponsor, Ridley Funeral Home. For contests and comments, we read all of the emails, Humble and Fred at HumbleandFredRadio.com. Tell us what you think. Maybe you'll hear your comments on Monday, Humble and Fred at HumbleandFredRadio.com. And here's something you can do to help us out. Subscribe to the podcast. Maybe share Share an episode with one of your close friends. Rating the podcast would help as well. For Humble and Fred from the Richard Bullis Zoom Theater, I'm Dan Duran. And remember, love to see you tonight, but even if you can't go tonight, we'll be there for you tomorrow. And enjoy every core damn day. Where's that?